Welcome, Welcome to, to the Eisenstein Effect. Effect. I'm your host, Vicki Eisenstein, and this is my guest, Elizabeth Taylor. The Elizabeth Taylor. Now, Elizabeth Taylor is an actor, she's a dancer, and she wrote out this gigantic list of things that she is and her accomplishments. Um, I'm just very quickly going to go through some of them. Uh, Boy Scouts, you were a Boy Scout? Yes, that is a thing. <laughs> so, you can be a Boy Scout before Girl Scout starts. Girl uh -huh. Scout starts in kindergarten, but if you're uh -huh. four years old and you want to join the Scouts, you can be a Boy Scout for one year in the Cub Scouts. You can also become a Boy Scout after the Girl Scouts ends in high school. You go to college, you become a Boy Scout. Or, what? Yep, yeah, that's a thing. I had no idea. <laughs> At that point, I feel like it should just be Scout. Yeah. Like, we drop a gender. They kind of talked about that, but they didn't really do that. What's a lifelong GS? Girl Scout. Oh, Girl Scout. So it goes I, with that. You pay like a one-time fee. Uh -huh. You become a lifelong member of the Girl Scouts. Oh. So I did that long ago. I and became an independent that. Girl Scout. When in high school, puberty hit me and didn't hit some of the girls who were still in Girl Scouts, I went independent and became an independent Girl Scout. So I didn't have a troop after that for like three Wait, years. Wait, so at puberty, yeah, well, you know, one can become their own Girl Scout? <laughs> Pretty much. I know, right? That's so funny. <laughs> it's part of, you know, getting your period. You uh -huh. become, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's one of the badges that you get when you right. have your period as exactly. a Girl Scout. Exactly. It's got a little blood drop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so we've also got, you were, okay, so you are a marksman. Yes, I was as a child. Oh. I stopped at the age of 12. <laughs> I, I topped out at 12 <laughs> and moved on with my life. Can you still shoot? Do you? Ever? I play video games. I'm okay. okay. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure it helps. <laughs> I'm gonna pause this list for a second because it's just like literally modeling, know. pilot, ballerina, tap and jazz, civil air patrol, published poet, exchange student to Dominican Republic? That's uh, Denmark. Denmark to Denmark. DM is Dominican Republic. Oh, I, 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 okay, that makes sense. Uh, champion fencer, she's an ABA therapist, sushi chef. Tour guide, apprentice chocolatier, damn, sure. karaoke DJ, <laughs> freelancer, sketch comedian, Shakespeare summer stock? Yeah, that's one of my trainings. I did three years of Shakespeare summer stock. You wow. Know that is, it's like apprenticeship programs, journeyman. Okay. It was a journeyman program. You were a journeyman? Oh, yeah. That's so cool. <laughs> that is so cool. Uh, costume and props master. Yeah, so Not the years mistress. Years doing that. Ah, just it was easier to write. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> General crafter, DIY, beer brewer. Yeah, certified beer brewer. World Brewing Academy, Siebel's. Did that last Christmas actually, just just for the hell of it. And then within months became paleo, and now it's a useless oh. useless certification. <laughs> except that we did have a small section on cider and mead that I can mm -hmm. use. So. Okay. And I sound really badass at parties because I know a lot about beer. I love that, and I love cider. <laughs> I, dude, invite me to your parties. Um, <laughs> let's see. A uh, tree farmer certified? Yeah, we are certified tree farmers. We have a tree farm, 650 acres in South Carolina, and it's uh, certified by the South Carolina Agriculture uh, Society. What kind of thing. trees? We have pine mostly, softwood, okay. so it's mostly paper trees, mm -hmm. but uh, we're going to have one furniture tree, big hardwood cutting coming at the end. So. So cool. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Burlesker. Yeah. And Transgender burlesque. That's where the Duke's Wellington comes in. Yeah, so I what? start as a dude, uh -huh. and I strip down, and uh -huh. oh my god, it's a chick. <laughs> that is awesome. Dang, I'm trying to get through your list here. I know, uh, it's stupid. Experimental linguist, voiceover work. Experiential linguist. Experiential. I was told this by a professor linguist. I was like, I'm an amateur linguist, and she says, no, you're actually considered an experiential linguist. You probably are too. Um, mm -hmm. It's people who have lived inside of languages mm -hmm. and used that knowledge to not just learn the language, but actually learn the ins and outs of what the language does with its syntax oh. and with its sentence structure and with its mm -hmm. grammar and all that kind of stuff. Okay. So if you are capable of describing how Korean uh, is as a language, instead of just knowing how to say things, do you mm -hmm. understand the actual base of the yeah. language, then you are an experiential linguist as well. Everyone, I'm an experiential hey! linguist. So awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna start adding to my card of things right? I do. Yeah, oh, I know. <laughs> I see my dad's business card is ridiculous. He was really? like a race car driver and a competitive rifle and a 
he says professional chef, but I actually went to culinary school. He was a really? professional writer, but my dad just writes like, my dad's Kilgore Trout, basically, and he writes, mm -hmm. he writes like sci-fi porn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I see that you're not you're not into sci-fi porn. That's not one no, of the things you've No, but into, yeah. I was wondering if you were interested in a, a one gift that I didn't put in the gift bag. She I, got me a gift bag. I make I make ornaments. They're ornaments with porn on them. What? And they're in the fragile box behind you if you want one. Can you see them? I'm Is also, it okay? <laughs> if you do like these things, where you ever see the makeup gurus and they like put their hand up against Absolutely. the thing? Yeah, that's what we're trying to do here. Um, is it seeing it? Is it? Well, all right. I'm gonna describe this. We've got we've got a lady who's who's trying to lick her own nipple. We've got um, we've got some chicks with a dick between them, <laughs> and uh, we got we got a lady touching herself in an enjoyable manner. And, and then, simple advertisements, phone numbers you yeah, can call. Yeah, advertisements. What what dreads? Oh, I do felted dreads for a while. I. Uh did felted dreads and stuff. I still have those in the box. I don't do them much anymore. For like other people's hair? Because they're not very popular. Oh. Uh, yeah, I do them with people's hair, mostly mm -hmm. on my hair. But oh, okay. I do commission bits for pieces That's for people so cool. who want them. Yeah. Like felt awesome. little skulls into them and stuff. I want to see pictures. Yeah. Oh, you can find them online. Go to awesome. go to iHeartKaraoke.com iHeart and you'll find a picture of me with my accordion and my dreads. <laughs> what? I play the accordion. It's on the list. Uh, where, was that? where was that on the list? I, I missed know. it. I don't think we got so all the way. We didn't get every through, yeah. but... Um... Recycling site manager. <laughs> she has on your failed magician. Yes, that was terrible. I got booed by eight-year-olds, no. and I got heckled by 12-year-olds. What? They were awful. They were awful, no. awful little creatures. And I was only like 14, 15. I was just older oh. than them, but they were little bastards. And yeah, they, they didn't. You tried everything as a child, didn't yeah. you? That was the same That's time awesome. I was learning to play bass guitar. I also failed at that. That's why oh. I play the accordion. Because I did not fail at the piano. <laughs> the accordion is just it's a sideways piano. It's true, that has like a bit of a keyboard on it there. It is just yeah. a sideways piano. And it's only got like three sets of keys, so it's much easier, much smaller. Can you play something on the accordion for me? <laughs> Perhaps. Perhaps? Of course. Absolutely. Okay. Because I want that. I'll play my favorite. Can you do that now? Yeah, of course. Yay! I'm also part of the, uh, the accordion association, but I never go to meetings. I just pay them. Uh -huh. Ten bucks a year or whatever. to be in their thing. Yeah, I went to one meeting. It was really boring, and they had pizza. And I didn't want it. So crap! Look at this. Let me see. Okay, this is Tom Waits, mm -hmm. Chocolate Jesus, mm. and I like it because it just plays a bunch of flats and sharp notes, and those are fun. That's that fun. <laughs> yeah. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm still I'm still banging out my keys so I can uh -huh. hear which one's it. Because my problem is I play by ear. Um, I'm one of those okay. assholes. Yeah. I actually learned how to read music and it doesn't matter. Uh huh. Because even when I'm reading the music, I'm still gonna play it by ear. Yeah. And so I have to bang everything out mm -hmm. by song. <sighs> you know what? Yeah. I'm so, I'm so embarrassed because I'm so scared to do this. Aww. I don't I don't get nervous playing things Aww. or doing things with this one. But with the camera. Because I've never mm. played the accordion in front mm. of people. I only play it in front of Jay. Yeah, Jay, though, it and Jay so her? and I usually play it with him too. So oh, Jay's her so, husband. When yeah. she's been saying we and stuff like that, that was actually referring to her husband. And <laughs> I'm one of those people who's actually been married for 16 years. So you become a we. There's never an I. It's generally yeah. a we. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing. It's the freaking awesomest thing ever. Yeah. <laughs> From somebody who was not expecting to get married at all. <laughs> no, I love it. That's great. Yeah, for you. It was the craziest shit ever. When you find that when you go, holy shit, okay, I have two choices. I can mm -hmm. do the path I was planning mm -hmm. and give up on this that could be new and amazing mm -hmm. and awesome, or let's go with the awesome. That's what I ended up mm -hmm. choosing. Yeah. I don't no, think my that's... path would have been as much fun. It would have been more lucrative. No, you two seem fun. to fit very well together. Yeah. I yeah. mean, even just, I mean, the way their house is, you can kind of tell that, like, wow, this is a craziness that's working. <laughs> I didn't give you advance notice because oh, I didn't no. realize that you were an accordion player. I, so. didn't, even, I didn't think it would come up. All sorts of things come up when I'm doing it's my because interviews. people hate accordions. No, I love that. Everyone hates accordions. I even have signed picture with Weird Al Yankovic, and this yeah. is again how much the accordion does to me. I met Weird Al Yankovic. Mm -hmm. I don't normally gush over celebrities. I normally uh -huh. let them be and like, yeah. oh hey, how's it going? There's somebody there. It's cool. Okay, whatever. Um, I lost my shit. <laughs> I couldn't speak, and Jay had to translate the really? words that I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you're from one of the Carolinas, right? Well, I was 
born in South Carolina, mm -hmm. but I wasn't raised there, not at first. Mm -hmm. oh. I was actually raised 10 horrifying years in Alabama. It's a terrible, terrible place. <laughs> really? Don't go. What was so if terrible there? If you're there, there? leave. <laughs> oh my god, it's just awful. Uh, it's the worst education in the country. It was actually 48 out of 50 states at the time. Really? Last I heard it, it dropped to 49 or 50. Oh wow. Um, with Mississippi as always the next worst. All right, Alabama. So yeah, you're in worst. Alabama for 10 years, yeah. was it? And then, and then moved to the glorious mountains of North Carolina. Okay. And now then, you mentioned uh, though you did piloting. Oh yeah. Was that while you were in Alabama? Mostly. I do most of my lessons in Alabama and then finished in the mountains of North Carolina and that's when I was on the on Fox News for that. She went yeah. on Fox News for being like the youngest pilot. Yeah, the that's, Girl Scouts sent me there. You're piloting, you're Girl Scouting. Uh, what, how did the theater come <laughs> into that? So, I'd always been on stage. I've been on mm -hmm. stage every year of my life since I was three. Mm -hmm. I've always had at least one performance on a stage. Really? Um, so that's all I kind of knew, but I started off as a dancer. Mm -hmm. um, at three, I was doing just basic kids dance, uh -huh. but by like eight or 10, I was competing. Okay. and doing semi-pro ballerina stuff. So it was like whenever the pros came to town, they'd hire uh -huh. locals. And when you're a local on stage with pros, you'd be semi-pro. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. don't get paid, but you get trained with the cool people. That is, you know, you're sharing the stage. That's right. Awesome. So that was rad. And that's like mm -hmm. the step up. But then mm -hmm. I got to be like 12, 13 years old and my tits grew. Uh -huh. And they were like, oh, guess what? If you want to continue being a ballerina, um, we don't have costumes that fit you. Because girls don't have C cups, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, 12, 13, yeah. and they're just gonna get bigger. So basically, they said, move over to tap and jazz, which I did, and Wait, I moved really? that. I just really? started doing can... musical theater immediately after that because the dancing went with it. I'm just so amazed that they yeah. can tell a girl, like, oh yeah, because we don't have a was it that was the surface reason though we don't have a costume. Oh no, that really happened. I was doing the Nutcracker this year, this uh -huh. one particular year, and um, I was the understudy for uh, the main character, mm -hmm. which. Never got to do, of course, but mm -hmm. hey, I got to train it. That was cool. And, uh, but I was the party children. Uh -huh. And and we had like three other things we did, mostly party children scenes. Uh -huh. And the costume they gave me, they had to give me an adult costume and yeah. tailor it up because I'm short. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't have a kid's costume or any ballerina's costumes that would fit my chips. Wow. So they tailored a, yeah, an Dang. adult costume for me. And that's the year they were like, you couldn't be a ballerina, not in a company, because companies use the same costumes every year. Oh. And so they want the girls to be the same size. Okay. That's not like, that's not as well, it is an aesthetic thing, but mm -hmm. it's also a practical thing. They gotcha. can't afford to buy new costumes every year. That does make sense. It does. And you know, there are other places you can go. You can mm -hmm. go into jazz, you can go into mm -hmm. tap, which I went really big into tap. Mm -hmm. And you can go into other areas of dance, and yeah. I did. But I also noticed that was, there was no way I was gonna have a career in dance. So I pushed into musical theater. Okay. And then I went to, uh, did music Musical theater training, and mm -hmm. that's when I started doing all the, you know, journeyman programs and apprenticeships okay. and stuff. And yeah, gotcha. That's how theater came out. This apprenticing and journeyman, journeyman stuff was, was that during high school? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And then, so what does that entail to be? Because I think of journeyman, <laughs> I think of like the medieval times. Oh, or something, you know? right, right. Yeah. <laughs> and the same thing with apprenticeships. Mm -hmm. and this is one of the reasons I barely finished college was that I realized that in our day and age, the degree system is completely degraded mm -hmm. because anybody with any money or any way to get some money can take a degree. Yes, the caddy wants to go out because we walk him. What's he doing? He's scratching on the door. That's scratching on the door? Yeah. <laughs> Their cat goes on walks. Yeah, he, he wears a leash <laughs> and he walks around the, uh, the neighborhood. Not really the neighborhood. We're too scared to let him do that. Oh, he's meowing. <laughs> this is the kitty. Aw, hi. <laughs> He's Sunshine was it? Christmas kitty. He's so cute. Mm -hmm. He's a Norwegian forest cat. When did like the the chef chefing? Yeah. Chefing. That's so not that, a word. It's a uh, culinary. When did the yeah. culinary arts come to play in your life? <laughs> uh, that was necessity, and the necessity bred uh, an actual passion. Mm -hmm. I uh, needed a job, mm -hmm. and my first job was at a restaurant because mm -hmm. everybody I know worked at restaurants, mm -hmm. and so I was dishwashing, mm -hmm. and then dishwasher moved way up to busser. Buster moved up way up to waiter, and waiter was shit. So I said, I'm not gonna do this, uh -huh. and I learned how to cook. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then when I was in business school, all I could think was, I want a restaurant, I want a restaurant. Uh -huh. So I went to culinary school, and then I said, oh God, I don't want a restaurant. You, you had sushi chef listed. That as was your one of my first jobs, actually. And oh, that was, okay. again, necessity. I mm -hmm. needed a job, a place needed a sushi chef. My sister in law, 
who lives upstairs from me, is a sushi chef. She oh. trained me very quickly, okay. and uh, and I was I was told that for a white girl, I rolled very 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 professionally. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, you roll professionally, yeah. but I had go. to do this. I did this uh -huh. on a buffet at a very fancy hotel that is now yeah. an Omni Hotel, but it was competition for the Biltmore in Asheville. Uh -huh. This was big, you know, big money people, uh -huh. rich people coming through, and I had to roll on a buffet, uh -huh. not made to order. A buffet wow. of sushi with thousands of people coming through. So you had to just constantly roll, roll. It's eight hours. It's no like break. a factory job. It is exactly yeah. like a factory job. Oh my gosh. And often they had me dress up, a mm -hmm. wig, you know, like a geisha style wig. Oh. Sometimes painted my face, usually didn't. Had a hot pee that I wore. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? Dang. <laughs> okay. And then uh, for private penthouse parties at the top of the hotel, they'd hire me to roll. For the parties, yeah. and they have me do the full dress. Yeah, that is really. Like, did kimono, you get to keep the face kimono paint. and stuff? I have. Well, it was mine. It was already. Oh, mine. okay. <laughs> I already had all the shit. You just happen to have all this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah, I got a kimono. Why? <laughs> well, we were looking. We were looking over other parts of her house, and she has so many different <laughs> outfits. And because the, her and her husband both do theater, so they've got so many outfits. <laughs> That's great. So then, how did you meet Jay? Actually, oh, theater. Through theater. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. gotcha. So why don't you tell me a little bit about the types of productions that you two have done together then? Oh, yeah. So we started in Asheville. Uh, we started off with a local group there, mm -hmm. Pleiades, and we did a bunch of weird avant-garde stuff with them. We did yeah. like the three trials of Oscar Wilde. You can look it up. It's a weird play. Uh -huh. um, it's very Asheville. Uh -huh. And we did um, Caligula okay. and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. we were doing those for three or four years. Uh, and then we got... I got cast in a live sitcom. Mm -hmm. A girl had walked out, they cast me, mm -hmm. and so we did a live sitcom for three or four years in a basement bar. The live sitcom was so live that we would do reruns from the week before for people who had missed it. <laughs> really? <laughs> and previews and commercials mid-show. Generally, the whole thing scripted. We learned a new script every week. We barely took a couple weeks off for holidays. Oh, my. Did this for two or three years, and then we those people kind of broke apart, but then came uh -huh. back together as a sketch comedy troupe. Wow. Feral Chihuahuas, which mm -hmm. are still in Asheville. Mm -hmm. um, we left them just before they hit it big. Oh. <laughs> we came to Chicago to become mm -hmm. hermits. <laughs> so what was what was the impetus to come to Chicago? I had tried to get here several times. Mm -hmm. I've been told this is the place to go. I always in theater I'd always done anything in theater I could mm -hmm. get my hands on yeah I would audition for men's roles and be turned down I'm like I don't care you saw my face yeah you know I'd audition for anything but um, I knew I wanted to do comedy mm -hmm. and so I was so excited when I got in the sketch comedy troupe mm -hmm. I tried to get into all the sketch comedy fest I tried desperately to get into Chicago sketch fest yeah and we got turned down turned up they got in the year I moved here oh, <laughs> I wasn't with them that's so funny. but we showed up in video so it was okay. cool uh, it was nice they had a video for us okay uh, we were <laughs> pre-filmed sketches and uh, but we had tried to get here forever my brother moved here we came mm -hmm. to visit we came to visit it was my birthday weekend and it happened to fall on easter it's okay. a rare treat it happens like three times in my life mm -hmm. but it fell on easter we're walking around chicago drunk there are bunnies everywhere <laughs> we didn't know at the time but we was like easter day my birthday uh -huh. magical bunnies uh -huh. and we're drunk from delilah's uh -huh. and uh and i finally was like that's it we're fucking moving here aren't we Jay's like, yep, let's move. And so we moved one month later after the That's, visit. Wow. And we dropped the feral chihuahuas and came here. I came for several reasons. We needed jobs. It was the very beginning of the crash. Mm -hmm. It was before the crash was announced. We saw it coming because we were in a tourist town. Mm. We knew this was coming. We, mm -hmm. Our jobs were drying up. So we yeah. came here for jobs. We came here for the winters. We hadn't had a decent winter in our whole lives living <laughs> in the south. And then you got the polar vortex. Oh my God, this is the best <laughs> thing ever. We were here for the blizzard in like 2009, 2010. Uh -huh. That was the most kick ass thing ever. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, I was like whistling down the street, skipping down the street in the middle of the blizzard and everything's I'm an asshole. I'm like, I don't care. I love your snow. Oh, man. <laughs> I apologize. So but, what have you been doing since you've been in Chicago then? Well, we did our first several years mm -hmm. uh, doing sketch shows, uh, trying to build the karaoke business. That's another reason we came here. Mm -hmm. Karaoke was saturated in Asheville. Mm -hmm. We wanted to start a business, so we came here for it. And uh, karaoke hadn't picked up, but when it did, it killed the comedy. So when you're doing karaoke five nights a week, yeah. there's no room for rehearsals or a show. Yeah. And so we stopped doing comedy for a couple of years to karaoke. We just retired from karaoke from regular gigs. We still do parties. We still uh -huh. do weddings. We still do our secret gigs if you know about them. If you don't, you can 
find out. The only hint I'll give you is comic book shops. If you like comic books, you can find out where we are. What would you like people to check out and see and do? Hmm. I don't know. I don't really have any blogs. No. Not really. Well, she would say go to her iHeart Karaoke website. There you go. Website. Check out iHeart Karaoke. Yep. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you so much for watching or listening to The Eisenstein Effect. We're here every week. New guests. You can check us out on SoundCloud or iTunes. You can listen to the podcast here on YouTube. You can watch it. Um, also, we have a Twitter at Eisenstein EFCT because the whole word wouldn't fit there at the handle. <laughs> um, and also check out my website, www.vickyeisenstein.com. My personal Twitter at Vicki Ironstone. I'm done with plugs. I don't want to do anymore. Nah. So, uh, thank you so much for being <laughs> thank on. Thank you. You're amazing. I super appreciate it. Yay. <laughs>